So here is your current pecking order. Tony Bow leading the world championship on 58 points ahead of Jaime Busto on 46, trails him by 12. Gabriel Marseille, six points further back in third. Big shock of the season so far, Adam Raga, 10 points down on those championship podium positions. And then a real division from fourth position down. Toby Martin, who's currently fifth, is uh, only uh, seven points ahead of Sondre Hager, all the way down in ninth, eight points ahead of Matteo Grattarola in 10th. He is 18 down on Adam Raga, uh, currently fourth position in the standings. So we've got fights for the medal positions and a separate squabble this season so far for fifth overall. So the uh, inverse of that will be your starting order that you'll see along the top of your screen. Matteo Grattarola will be the first man out through these sections. Five of them. And uh, five minutes for him to make his way through. Matteo Grattarola down in 10th in the championship standings. Hence his first starting position. And he managed to beat Marco Mempor at extra Wiener Neustadt. Otherwise, two last places, just four points to his name. And it's been an unsettled start to 2023 for Grattarola with a change of manufacturer, a late winter surgery, and then subsequent injury. He could really do with an improved result here to avoid those early season woes dragging on throughout the season. Section number one then for Matteo Grattarola. It's the rhythm section. He's made it successfully through those uh, blocks. A bit of technical work for him to do here. A little bit errant there on the landing. That's going to cost him a single mark for leaning. Close up demonstrates it. Just landing it on the sump. And to FIM section observer Moreno Piazza wasting no time in signalling a mark dropped for Matteo Grattarola. Mark on his opening run. Section difficulty will gradually increase over the night. The time allowance will be far shorter in the second round. Grand final. One section at a time as always will be tackled in two directions. Five minutes. On the initial clock, plenty of them, more than uh, one minute used on this section one so far. Grattarola is taking his time, and he's through. And section one, just a single mark his name. You feel that one as uh, a bit of a frustration, I, I suspect, Matteo Grattarola. On section down. Now into section two, the green modules. Layout on the course. Okay. Another drop mark for leaning there. Grattarola did his utmost to try and push the bike forward to stop himself from taking that mark. He does eventually drop back onto the sub, has to do so to avoid falling down to a five mark score. Of course, five marks the maximum penalty in any of the sections for accruing more than three marks for exceeding the course limits for uh, falling. So Grattarola then. In section two, Lowest ranked rider in the championship, so he is uh, breaking new ground. Another mark dropped for leaning there. A mark for leaning broke away part of the section by the looks of it. Certainly the edge broke away as Grattarola landed on it. Matteo Grattarola making light work for section two as well. A couple of marks dropped for leaning through there, so that moves him onto a progressive score of three. He's made back a little bit in terms of time as well. Section 3, the scaffold tower. Signature. Take place in France. Sizable opening ramp, but uh, Grattarola makes that look fairly straightforward with uh, no shortage of throttle. The step could have uh, cost him a mark for leading, but again, Grattarola working through well. The scoring run as far for Grattarola. Time is going to be of the essence later on, though. That's another potential risk for a drop mark for leading, isn't it? But, uh, peak. Section number three. Uh, Grattarola comes through unscathed. In one and a half minutes to go, though. Two sections still to go. Not sure he's judged this right in terms of time, Matteo Grattarola. 
going to leave him very tight, either for both sections or just for the final section, depending on what he does here. He's receiving instruction from his assistant. May well already be a, a mark for leaning. That certainly will be. One for footing, the left foot going down. It is just the two for now for Matteo Gratarola. Section four, the wooden blocks. This is a tricky little uh, step for Gratarola now to manage. See his approach. He tries to do it in one fluid motion and it doesn't work for him. He's down to a five mark score. Certainly the most uh, challenging element that we've seen in this uh, round one course thus far. Rotorola only has just over 30 seconds now to tackle these giant cables. It's been a good ride through the first three sections with only three drop marks. Now time is of the essence, even after that failure in section four. Struggling to get himself into position. Gratarola could run out of time here. I don't think he's going to make it. Still trying to find some balance. Matteo Gratarola, I think that was a small shake of the head as well. And it is going to be a failure in section five for Matteo Gratarola, who just ran out of time. And what a shame for him, because in the end, what looked like being a fairly low scoring run in the opening three sections ends up being pretty high scoring with two failures to uh, complete round number one for Matteo Gratarola. Three drop marks in the opening three sections. A few for leaning as he made his way through, and then the uh, wooden blocks catching him out. A little bit of technical difficulty through there, and then that five just running out of time through the cable reels. So Matteo Gratarola sets the target score of 13. Sondre Hager is next up. Seventh for him at X trial Pamplona last time out. Strong second run in particular to avoid that basement position. Uh, Tondre Hager has started the night with three fiascos in four sections, so he will be very keen to hit the ground running here tonight. He'll also have a good indication of how much time he can afford to spend on each section as he drops down to a single mark there for leaning. That's a shame because he'd made the step well, but uh, as he moved the back tyre around to position himself, he dropped back onto it. The assistant usually giving the information about how much ground the riders have got. Not very much is the answer. These are narrow ledges for the riders to rest on. The bike doesn't sit comfortably. That's done intentionally, making the rider work for it. These uh, kinds of rhythm sections are something that we've seen uh, become a trademark of Tony Bow that he likes to show off on his Instagram account. Uh, some of the, the work that he's able to do on the back tyre. Bouncing from one module to the next. It's Andre Hager then. So far, so good in section one, but again, he's used up plenty of time, just as Mateo Gratarola did before him, and Hager's in trouble. And Sondre Hager comes down in section one for a five mark score. So Mateo Gratarola made his way through that one, and that's the worst possible outcome as far as Hager is concerned, because not only has he failed section one, He's done so right at the end of the section, so he's lost one and a half minutes in a section he hasn't completed. Section two, green modules. Took two marks for Matteo Gratarola to get through. There's one for Sondre Hager. Let's see if he can make the other step without dropping another. This next step is where Matteo Gratarola took his second mark. Sondre Hager's twice beaten Matteo Gratarola in X Trials this season, on both occasions that they've met. Gratarola with the upper hand by comparison in section one. Here it is then for Hager, and he's down. Second consecutive fiasco for Sondre Hager. Disastrous start as far as he is concerned. Now to avoid slipping into the basement position, most that he can afford to drop from the remainder of the course is uh, three marks. However, Matteo Gratarola finished on 13 and ran out of time. Sondre Hager on 10. Two minutes 20 still to come. The scaffolding tower, section 
number three up next for Hager. Road extra Pamplona last time out, still not uh, fully fit. Had only six weeks or so to recover from an ankle injury before the trip to Navarra. He uh, said there he had no real pain, but uh, it was certainly so tough for him to uh, ride some of the big sections at the Spanish Championship last weekend. And it uh, remains to be seen what that means about his aspirations here tonight. Sondre Hacker making his way through section three. Mateo Gratarola has shown the way in the first three sections. And Sondre Hager is able to uh, match that kind of performance through section three, the scaffold tower. It is his first completed section of the night and his first clean as well. Straight into section four. Tricky step partway through this one. First piece of wizardry to manage here for Sondre Hager. Single mark for leaning. See if he can avoid taking one for footing. It is just the single mark for Sondre Hager. Next trial's only Norwegian competitor. Takes a different ap approach to Gratarola. Single mark for footing. Now he's going to try and lift the bike. Use his natural advantages as the tallest rider on the X trial circuit. Is he going to be able to pull this off? This will be uh, very spectacular if he can manage it. He tries to force the bike forward, but no way for him to get enough purchase. And down he goes. Third fiasco of the run for Sondre Hager. 15 marks from four sections already behind Matteo Gratarola. And with only just over 30 seconds to make it through the cable reels, this could very easily be a 20-mark run for Sondre Hager. And it is. Down he goes to a five-mark score right on the very first step. Hager's going to be pretty gutted about that, I suspect. That is a very high-scoring run. And when you think that Matteo Gratarola had got through sections one and two that Hager failed, and then Hager fails the final two sections, the same as Gratarola, to sit seven marks behind him in the pecking order for round number one. Next up will be Benoit Bincaz. Seventh place for him at uh, Extra Pamplona a fortnight ago. Result that dropped him to the same position in the championship standings. He's only two points back from fifth place overall, though. And as I've said, with a rather separate group from fifth place down, that's probably the target at this stage as far as the season is concerned for Benoit Bincaz. Still chasing a first podium since Bilbao 2020. Five minutes for five sections. Target score of 13 set by Matteo Gratarola. The key for Bincaz will be to at least match the Italian through these first three sections where Gratarola showed some uh, good flair. And then see if he can get through either sections four or five. Preferably for Bincaz both. Put himself in real contention qualification through to the grand final. That's the main target for the riders, not to be in the top three positions. First step achieved successfully by Benoit Bincaz. Now he'll know that if he can get through this section one quickly as well. Whoa, he slides down and he's been given two there. And that'll be both for leaning, I think, for Benoit Bincaz. The initial landing on the sump, he hauled the bike forward. He thought he was trying to avoid taking one mark for leaning, but he'd already been given one. And then landing on the sump, he takes another. So Bincaz trying to avoid taking one mark, ends up taking two. So that's going to be a third as he positions himself. Left foot goes down, so any further drop marks now for Benoit Bincaz will be a failure in section one. And he's already used over a minute of the time allowance as well. Benoit Bincaz trapped, and down he goes. Just like Sondre Hager before him, it's a five-mark score. Matteo Gratarola, slightly different line there through section one, paying dividends. Section two then for Benoit Bincaz. Five marks already. He might hope to make some back later on through the course. Big step to open in section two. He does take a mark for leaning. Now positioning the bike carefully to avoid taking any more drop marks. Matteo Gratarola setting the early benchmark on 13. Can't help but feel that Gratarola was capable of more had he not been first out through the sections. Obviously, that's his problem from uh, 
having underperformed at the opening rounds of this season. But uh, not having had the opportunity to watch other riders make their way through, it would have been tougher for him to judge the time. Crucial element throughout the net. Bunabinkas. Oh, good work there for him to get up that step without dropping any further marks for leaning, so it's just one still through these green modules for Benoit Vincas. Great ride from him. This comes from Celia in section one. Benoit Vincas gets straight back with a single drop mark in section two. Best of anyone through there so far. Section three, cleaned by each of the last two riders, so as keen to match them. Troubles to build up his momentum there, but just about makes it to the top of that ramp. Step to come for Benoit Vincas. Plenty of this course still to go. In section three. That's going to be a drop mark or leaning. First drop mark of anyone in section three. Will he take another there? Just on the crest of that section. Wait for official confirmation. Certainly one to be given. Just under one and a half minutes remaining on the clock for Bunra Binkaz. First man to drop any marks in section three. It is just a single mark. Binkaz moves on to seven. Gratarola was on just three at the same stage. Binkaz then needs a big finish. Will he become the first man to make it through either of these final two sections when he hasn't made it through section four? But he has got a minute to have a real good go now at section five. The cable reels. He looks up at the timer. Asks for the encouragement of the crowd. Home man, Benoit Binkaz. Often used as the expression in the media that the, uh, the crowd gives him wings. He'll need them here for section five. Well, finished on 13. Confident start to the section for being cast. It is a long one. He's got less than 30 seconds now to manage it. Pushing on through. Little drop mark here, and he's level with Matteo Gratarola. Nobody yet has made it through this section five. How about for Robin Katz? Needs to be swift through here. This is where Matteo Gratarola failed. Nobody's made it any further than this. How about being casted? Five seconds on the clock, and he too is down for a five mark. 17 mark total in round number one for Bunra Binkaz. Your pecking order, Matteo Gratarola leads on 13, ahead of Bunra Binkaz on 17, and Sondre Hagger on 20. A disappointing start for the home favourite. Fourth out through the sections will be Aniel Jellabert. Fifth and sixth place finishes on the board for him this season. He uh, nearly sprung a surprise at extra Vina Neustadt, didn't he? Finished second in his opening run and only missed out on the podium places by two marks. And he was on the rostrum in the Spanish Championship at the weekend, really coming of age in 2023. It's Aniel Jellabert. Youngest rider in the field, the 22-year-old. Takisa Fujinami, former extra winner, imparting his wisdom to his young protege, Gabriel Marseille, the Repsol Honda team, as Aniel Jellabert makes his way through section one. Crucial step and turn here. Very narrow ledges for the riders to rest their uh, tyres on. That's going to be a drop mark for leaning. Sump going down. Any part of the bike on the section is uh, a mark for leaning. Part of the body on the section is classified as footing. But either way, scores count the same. Jellabert is on one. Oh, that's a disaster, though. He didn't quite make it to the top of that cylinder. He's on three marks. He can drag the sump, but if he lifts it and drops it back down, it will be a fourth mark, and that will automatically be a failure. Any further drop marks here for Aniol Jellabert will mean a fiasco in section one. He'd be the third rider in a row. Time pressure to think about as well. Is it worth just rushing this one, come what may, and try and bank some time? 
Gullibert has the potential to save two marks here in section one, but only if he can make it through this step without dropping any further marks. Brilliant ride back from Aniel Gullibert. Spares his blushes in section one. A little bit of a clumsy ride through it. More drop mark, hope for. But two better than Hagger or being carved through that section one. Both of those two failed that section. Into section two now. And uh, has Aniel Gullibert remained in the section? Well, it looks as though he's going to be given a second shot there. We'll wait to see what that looks like in terms of uh, drop marks. Certainly two for leaning at very least. One for the first attempt and one for the second. Now, for me, Aniel Gelabert had just jumped out of the course boundaries. I don't think that any part of that bike was still in the section. He's just uh, Moreno Piazza, the section observer, goes over to speak with FIM referee Josep Punti. But Aniel Gelabert is... Still continuing on in section two. Wonder whether that'll have been uh, watched closely by the other riders in terms of being able to jump back to have another go. <laughs> Leaving the course boundaries, of course, would have been a, an automatic failure for Aniel Gelabert, but uh, he's still up and running. And what a save that was. Aniel Gelabert then gets through section two. I think it's going to be two marks. And how on earth? Did he manage to come back from that? Save of the century from Jellabet. In now to section three. It's been a wobbly ride to say the least so far for Aniel Jellabet. And yet, he's in a better position at this stage of the run than either Benoit Bincaz or Sondre Hager before him. Aniel Jellabet, I know, has his aspirations set quite a lot higher. Watch those podium places. Wow, he made section three look absolutely easy there. And that's helped him bank some time for the remaining two sections. Section four. This has been a formidable obstacle thus far. Ratarola, Hager and Big Kaz all failing it. Angela Bear is straight down and out in section four. And I must say, you almost feel that Jella Bear thinks he's got a better shot at section five than he would have had at section four. He got himself into the slightest of trouble in that penultimate section, and he dropped straight out of the side of it and has one minute 20 to give section five a really good go. Now, that strategy only works if he gets through this final section, and he's already taken two marks. One for leaning as he landed awkwardly on that first cable reel. That's going to be a third because he dropped the bike back down on the sum. That's a bit of a waste of a mark, really. Any further drop marks now for Aniel Gelabert, and he too will fail section number five. And there it is. It is a failure for Gelabert. He tries to stay in the section, but it's already game over. So it is two failures in the end. In the final two sections for Aniel Gelabert, it's a 15 mark finishing total. He slots in ahead of Bunua Binkaz and Sondre Hager, but behind Matteo Grazarola, and he looks disappointed about that. Good ride from him in section three. With a few errant dabs for leading the first two sections. And then, like each of the three riders before him, failures in sections four and five. Those look like being crucial for the riders who have realistic hopes of making it through to the grand final here today. Toby Martin next up really prioritising the X-Trial World Championship in his calendar this season. The Brit, despite only participating as an event rider, set out the second round of the British Championship a fortnight ago in favour of Extra Pamplona. So stayed out of Spain to participate in the Spanish Championship last weekend. Admittedly without too much success, but a good test at that level as he continues to learn on the job. Still just 22 years of age, Toby Martin. Elegant work initially on the step, but he drops back down onto the sump. Now that he's used the mark, he uh, takes the opportunity to have a little breather at the top. Better on the landing than Aniel Gelabert before him. Didn't have it quite where he wanted, so he just rushed straight on to the next step. And Martin chaining them together here, one after the other. What's he got in section one? Matteo Grattarola, best of anyone thus far with just a single dab. Aniel Gelabert squeezed home with three. But it looked precarious. Toby Martin. Here he goes. No, he can't make it either. Third rider to fail through there. A shame for Toby Martin. 
five marks already on the board then. Matteo Grattarola, remember, finished the run on 13. He's the man to beat for now. Section two next up for Toby Martin, the green modules. Only Sondre Hager thus far has failed this. Aniel Jalabert was perilously close though. First step in a single mark for leaning for Toby Martin. But he continues on three. Single drop mark for Toby Martin thus far. This is the second main step of these green modules. That's been costing riders uh, marks for leaning. Benoit Bincaz made it well through this. That has already been done. Toby Martin. Up he goes. And he's clean on that second step, so still just a single mark for leaning. Martin may well come to rue that five mark score late in section one. He looks good in section two. And it's six marks from two sections. The same as Benoit Bincaz at the same stage. The question is whether Toby Martin can get through either sections four or five, because if he can't, he is going to finish this run behind Grattarola and Gelabert. And that's an opportunity to move provisionally, at least, top of the uh, X-Trial Bordeaux leaderboard. 22-year-old Toby Martin uh, put out a press release on Tuesday asking for sponsorship support. That's led to a crowdfunding effort. Martin, the only privateer in the extra World Championship, double British champion and, of course, trial two champion. Certainly on the right platform to attract attention in front of these crowds. Lone Britain in the series. Helping to consolidate his place at this level. Two minutes to go for two remaining sections. Six marks. Still his aggressive score after becoming the fourth rider clean through section three. Well, Toby, you haven't got time for that. <laughs> the clock continues to count down as Martin takes on a little bit of hydration. Section four, these wooden blocks fail by all four riders thus far, the last two sections of the run. And Martin can do something different to the men who've tried and failed before him. First drop mark of the section there for leaning. So it's section four where Toby Martin hopes to make the difference. If he fails these final two, he'll drop to third in the standings. Big step here for him. Oh, beautiful work from Martin. First rider to make it this far, Toby Martin. He's broken the back of section four. He still has a minute on the clock. He's up, a second drop mark for leaning, but Toby Martin is the first man through the wooden block, section four. And that means that he will have the opportunity to finish round one as your leader. At least his ride as the leader. And so Grattarola finished on 13. Toby Martin on eight. Even a failure here. But to move him level with Matteo Grattarola. 30 seconds now. Toby Martin. And he become the first rider to make it through section five as well. Brilliant, brilliant ride from him in section four. Has he got the answer? This has failed by the four men before him. Tight on time like his predecessor. 15 seconds, so he's going to go for it. He lands it on the sub. Rush to the finish now for Martin. He looks at the stopwatch. Toby Martin is through in section five. Another brilliant ride to round out his run. Super effort from Toby Martin. Single drop puck in section five. Complete round one on a score of just nine. One failed section, section one. And even that field field wasn't far beyond his reach. Super ride that from Toby Martin. The four men before him had failed section four and five, but not the young Brits. So Toby Martin now leads on nine. Ahead of Matteo Grattarola on 13. Aniel Gelabert 15. Bunua Bincaz 17. And Sondre Hager, who trails on 20. Now it's time for your four big guns, the top men in the championship, men who've uh, really escaped away from the rest of the pack. Adam Raga, 18 points clear of Toby Martin in the championship standings. Up and running in section one. So Grattarola, the best of anyone through here with just a single drop mark. Raga, I'm sure, will see this as an opportunity to uh, save some time for the remainder of the run, but he's taken a first drop mark there for leaning. 
lands that square on the sump. Right, it's having problems there to uh, land things at the perfect angle. There's no flat surface, of course, on that cylinder. So just to find enough purchase to, uh, to keep the bike up and to keep their balance. Adam Ragger then with a single mark, so still nobody's been clean in this section one, the rhythm section. A tricky step to finish us off with. It's not a high step, but of course there's no run up to it. So let's look at uh, what the riders have got to work with, not very much at all. Upper body strength required in spades. Ragger's going to take a second mark for leaning, but he is through section one at very least. Two drop marks. Good course this one because uh, it's not been a clean or five situation. Riders have been able to get through, but they've needed to work for it. Aside from section three, which has been pretty straightforward, they need one or two easy sections because look at where they are all on time. Section two now, only failed by Sandre Hager this one. The key is to avoid dropping marks for leaning. There's one for Ragger. And another step later in the section that has been catching the riders out as well. Here it is. Adam Ragger, two marks from section one. Mark already dropped in section two for leaning on the opening step. Will he take another here? Bernard Binkaz and Toby Martin both made it through this step without dropping any further marks. But Adam Ragger takes one. Onto the sump, another one for leaning. So it was two in section one, it's two in section two. Far from disastrous, it will still be the best of anyone through the opening two sections. Toby Martin was on six at the same stage and came back to finish his run on nine. So Adam Ragger still has five marks to play with versus Toby Martin. The problem for him trailing those medal positions is he's uh, only fourth in the championship standings and therefore his main rivals in the series overall will start after him. He doesn't know what he's gonna need to do in order to qualify Directly to the grand final, only three riders will make it through, remember, after round number two. Five sections of round one and the four sections tonight in round two, slight change compared to the previous rounds, will be determinant in terms of the three men who march on. This is Adam Ragger. Been his worst start to an X-Trial season in a decade, 2023. I think back to 2013, when he finished seventh at the season opener. Scored 28 points from the first three rounds. He did manage to dig himself out that season with three second places at the final four rounds and still managed the silver medal. This season, he's on 30 from three, so in similar territory. Now at the veteran stage of his career, remains to be seen. And he can find that extra step to go with the leaders in this World Championship. Good work early in section four. Adam Ragger. This section completed successfully by Toby Martin, but he was the first. Up goes Adam Ragger. He too is able to make it through. So Ragger can steal a march here over Toby Martin. Martin was on six marks before this section, eight after its successful completion. Adam Ragger, the first man clean through section number four. Keeps him still on a score of four marks. And with almost a minute in hand to have a go at section five. Now, nobody's been clean through here either. Toby Martin took a single mark. Up goes Adam Ragger, first step. Successfully negotiated. Good first run score from Toby Martin. Guarantees him at least fifth. There's a drop mark for Adam Ragger. Moves now on to five. Only a failure though in this section will uh, leave him on the same score as Toby Martin. Martin uh, with the advantage having made it through section uh, five, so he's got an official time. Adam Ragger then with just over 10 seconds on the clock. Make it through and complete the cable reels. Oh. Ragger in a bit of trouble. He'll have taken another mark, I think, for leaning there. One for footing, and Adam Ragger's out for a five. So Adam Ragger, by my reckoning at least, will drop behind Toby Martin in the round one classification. It's a tie on nine marks apiece between the two of them, but Toby Martin will have the better time. So Toby Martin leads X-Trial Bordeaux. Adam Ragger slots into second on the same score of nine. 
Matteo Grattarola, 13, Aniol Jalabert, 15, then Buno Vincas, 17, and Sondre Haga on 20. Top three in the championship standing still to come. Looking to capitalise on a shaky start there for Adam Raga. Four drop marks in the first two sections and then a failure in section five. This is Gabriel Marseille. Still chasing his first X-Trail victory, but you feel he's getting ever closer. And looks to have got the measure of Adam Raga in 2023. The pair were tied after two runs in Barcelona and Wiener Neustadt, so close rivals. Then Raga made a couple of mistakes in Pamplona, but uh, Marseille really was brilliant there. Superb, clean second run, gave him his first bonus points of the campaign. Ten points now, his advantage over Raga in the battle for bronze. Just six points, his deficit for second overall, Jaime Busto. Nine marks the target score then in this opening round to move provisionally into those top three places. It will be the combined score from rounds one and two that will settle our qualifiers for the grand final tonight and our positions in the classification from fourth down. First main step of section one then for Gabriel Maaseyi. About positioning yourself without taking a mark for leaning and then about getting the landing right. So easy to slip off the side of a curved surface like that one. Maaseyi positions himself and he lands down onto the sump. Take advantage of that point. A little bit of breathing room to uh, manoeuvre the bike into position. This is what's to come. A bit of a preview for Marseille. Oh, and he's down. He did quite get the leap right. He was short and landed the front tyre on the ground. Out of the course for a five-mark score. Shock start to the run for Gabriel Marseille. Well, that could really put him in trouble. Toby Martin and Adam Raga finished round one on nine marks. Marseille's already on five. Any further failed sections, and he'll drop behind the two of them. Two men who sit directly behind him in the championship standing. So Marseille needs a fight back. Oh, and he's got it wrong right at the start of section two. And he tried to jump back as Aniol Jalabert did so successfully before him. But Marseille is down for a second consecutive fiasco. Ten up from two, only Sondre Hager failed at both of the opening two sections. Oh, Marseille really in the danger zone tonight. He's going to need a big shovel to dig himself out of this one, that's for sure. Section three. Only Benoit Bincas has dropped any marks through this one. Marseille needs a cool head here. One section down on the course tonight compared to the opening three rounds of this season, so that reduces further the opportunities to make back ground in round two. You've got to be close to the top three at the end of round one if you want to uh, have serious hopes of making it through. Marseille could have already ended his hopes of qualification to the grand final. Trying to make up for it here in uh, section three. So his first completed section of the run. Six men clean through there in Marseille among them. Two minutes still to go. Section four next up. Cleaned by Adam Raga. Two drop marks through here for Toby Martin. Marseille could really do with two cleans now. If he can get them, he'll finish round one just a mark behind Raga and Martin. And that'll mean at very least he'll be in the ballpark for qualification. If he drops much more than that, he's got a lot to make up in round two. Good work there on the back wheel to avoid dropping him up for leaning on that first step. Now the technical challenge. A hop, skip and a jump, so to speak. A, a bounce onto the other side and then up that step. Martin and Raga have made it look easy. The men before them have all floundered at this stage, if not sooner. Still over a minute on the clock. Good work from Marseille once again. They've mastered that now. Martin was the one who led the way. Just over a minute now to go. But Gabriel Marseille. Ten marks his score. Desperately needs to finish with two cleans. Looks like he might get one here in section four. He does. It's a clean in section four for Gabriel Marseille. Back to back cleans. He remains in contention. Really needs to get through this section five now. Five mark score through here. 
and he dropped behind Matteo Grattarola in the pecking order. Three marks and he'd be level with Grattarola. Even a clean here though, and he will still trail both Toby Martin and Adam Racker. Nice work there on the landing. Judges that to perfection. Big step to come, his assistant waiting at the top. 20 seconds, that's the call. I'll say he's a bit short on time, took his time in section four. He's got nothing to play with now in section five. He's got to go for it. Hasn't got time to position himself here. He needs to charge through. He's up. Gabriel Marseille spares his own blushes. He crashes heavily after completing the section, but the main thing is he was out of the exit gate with both tyres. Three consecutive pleads from Marseille, who has played a brilliant get out of jail free card. The bike might be battered and bruised, but uh, the man looks okay. And that's the main thing. Gabriel Marseille starts with two fiascos. It couldn't have been any worse. And yet he recovers to three cleans and finishes round one just a single mark behind Raga and Martin. And that's likely not to be too far off the qualification cutoff. He'll have four sections to try and make back that mark in round two. Two men still to come in round one in the meanwhile, Jaime Busto and Tony Bug. So three podiums to his name already in 2023. Busto has never before had more than three podiums in a single season. So if he qualifies through to the grand final today, it will be four from four. Personal best, but also would help him to consolidate his uh, medal ranking. Little doubt about it though, the target is gold. So he'll be gunning for top spot in the round one classification to give himself his first bonus point of the night. That was brilliant from Busto. You could see the back tire slipping down, but he didn't want to take that mark for leaning. He knows he's gonna need every mark he can get as he faces Tony Bow here in round one. A bit premature perhaps to be thinking about that round one bonus point, but Busto needs every mark, he, every point he can get against Tony Bow, trailing him by 12 in the championship standings. Six of those really wasted in the grand finals at Extra Barcelona and Extra Vina Neustadt. Oh, brilliant from Busto at the end of section one. Busto, the first man through clean in the opening section of the run. So Gratarola, the previous best with just a single mark. Getting off to the perfect start. Into section two. He'll take a mark for leading there. First drop mark of the run. Here's a sizable step with which they start that section two. Jaime Busto, who will probably feel that, as well as that victory he had earlier on in the campaign, he should have had two second places. Instead, they are they were thirds behind Gabriel Marseille. The difference is half of his gap. Instead of being 12 points down, he'd only be six back now from Tony Bow. Still only one drop mark in this section two in round one of Extra Bordeaux. Here does things stand by Toby Martin, head of Adam Raga. Just over every chance of moving top of the pecking order here. As he makes his way now towards section three. Cleaned by all but Bud Robin Cass this one. Heading towards the halfway mark in this section three and heading towards halfway on the clock as well. Has been efficient work from Jaime Busto thus far and he'll be pleased about that. Gives him a good shot at section four and five. Here he comes then. Still over two minutes remaining. Section four next up. And one mark against his name. Adam Ragger was on four at the same stage. Section four then. A couple of tricky steps to master in this one. Cleaned by each of the last two men through it though, Adam Ragger and Gabriel Marseille. What about Busto? Up he goes, still on the back tire. And still clean in section four. How about this little jink up to the top? Martin showed the way, Ragger and Marseille followed him. Busto does likewise, still clean. Real opportunity to take the bonus point in this round number one. 
Tony Bow will also fancy his chances, of course. Well, it's a brilliant ride clean in section four from Jaime Gusto. First man clean in section one could be what makes the difference for him. He's only dropped one mark in four sections. Section five then. Wanting to make sure that he has the stamina to see this through to the finish, Jaime Busto. Nine marks the score of Toby Martin. So even a five mark score here and Busto would still lead round one. And he knows that Tony Bow is going to be tough to beat. 12 points behind in the championship. I'm sure he'd like to pull one back here. Busto already looking at the end game. At that uh, giant cable reel at the top where his assistant is waiting. A little bit of work to do before he can uh, join him. Good to see him looking forward. Taking the section as a whole. 30 seconds to come. Assistant urging him to maintain his position. Busco moving back ever so slightly. Gives himself a good run up. Great ride that from Jaime Busco. It's a single mark run and Busco knows just how brilliant that was. He is delighted very early stages of the night to be celebrating like that so you know that he's pleased with that ride and why shouldn't he be eight marks better than anyone else has so far managed Martin and Ragger on nine Jaime Busto your new leader on just a single mark and so for Tony Bow there are two ways to beat that he can either clean the run or he can drop a single mark and bank more time than Jaime Busto There's something like 20 seconds still on the clock at the end of the run for Busto. So does Bo now rush this? Or does he make a concerted effort not to drop any marks? Well, you know Tony Bo, he'll be going for both. He'll want this bonus point because he's not been quite as in control this season as in past campaigns, particularly in those opening runs. Beaten in round one at uh, Extra Barcelona, of course, didn't get either of the two available bonus points at Extra Pamplona last time out. And he was beaten in the grand final at Extra Wiener Neustadt. So that cost him five world championship points after he failed two of the sections in the grand final and was left second. First drop mark of the run for Tony Bow. Any further drop marks and he'll slip behind Jaime Busto. And that will give the young Basque rider the first world championship point of the evening. The pressure on Bow once again. It's been so good to see in 2023. It's exactly what the intended outcome of the of regulation change was in seasons past to bring in this bonus point in the opening rounds. And Tony Bow in a little bit of difficulty in section one, but that's where his skill and wizardry keeps him in the section. He stays on the bike. He's taking a slightly different angle now to this step. He's up here. No, he isn't. He's down. Tony Bow with a failure, a shot failure. Jaime Busto takes a world championship point in round number one. The gap at the top of the championship standings is narrowed to 11 points. Still a sizable margin, but Tony Bow's biggest concern all season long and something he's mentioned various times in the press is his worry that in a low scoring run, he could be the victim, he could be the man to miss out at some stage on a place in the grand final. And that really would be critical with Raga, Marseille, Busto now so evenly matched. It's more of a reality than it's ever been. So Tony Bow will want to re-establish and extend the 12 point leading margin, reduced now down to 11 goes about things the right way in section two. First man clean through section two is Tony Bow. Five marks his score uh, more than a third of the way through this uh, round number one. Heading towards the halfway mark now, in fact, with section three. Well, this one you'd expect to be a mere formality. Benoit Binkaz, the only man to drop a mark through this uh, scaffold tower. Look at the height of that. Quite astonishing. Probably the highest section of this season so far. But uh, in terms of level of difficulty, not too great. 
two sections remain. Tony Bow on five. He can clean both of the remaining sections. He'll have a full mark advantage over Toby Martin and Adam Ragger. Any further drop marks here, of course, will eat into that lead ahead of those qualification positions. I'll say his teammate already trails. Bo clean thus far in section four. Big leap from him. Tony Bow is clean. A hat trick of cleans. Three in a row. Five marks his score with one to go. Failure here is all that could drop him out of the top three positions. Anything better than that. And he will be inside the provisional qualification places ahead of round two. So disaster in section one. Bad start to the run, just like his teammate Gabriel Marseille. Bo, though, has recovered more swiftly. One minute to go. Avoiding errors the key for Bo now. Beaten already by Jaime Busto, 2023 rival in this round number one. So under some pressure, a low scoring round. Feet off the pegs as he tries to get the balance, position the bike. Just about. Tony Bow makes it through with 30 seconds to spare, but crucially with a failure in section one that gives Jaime Busto the victory in round one. And the first World Championship bonus point of the night in extra Bordeaux. It's the way of the 25-year-old Gas Gas. Jaime Busto narrows then that championship deficit by a point. Well, Bo will be back to do it all over again, of course, in round two of this extra Bordeaux. Trail is great adversary for this season, Miami Busto. Here's a look at the results then of round number one of extra Bordeaux for 2023. Toby Martin with a super ride puts himself into the provisional top three qualification positions to the grand final. Adam Raga and Gabriel Marseille, rivals for bronze in 2023, have work to do. Best performance of the season so far from Matteo Grattarola. But it's Jaime Busto who leads and takes the first World Championship bonus point of this extra Bordeaux.